In our quick lesson today, we're going to have a go at adding our own animated fairy lights to an object or room that you're in. We're going to do this together by following five easy steps. After each activity, you'll be able to pause it, and then you can catch up before you move on to the next step. So step one, we're going to photograph either perhaps a room or an object that you want to decorate with fairy lights. In step two, we're going to bring that photograph into Keynote, where we're going to make it slightly transparent and lock it down, ready to begin some drawing. In step three, we're then going to start to draw our fairy lights around our picture. We're going to add some colour and some detail. And then in step four, excitedly, we're going to animate them and make them come to life, like they're twinkling and glowing. Finally, in step five, we're going to save our animation as an animated GIF, and then we can save it, share it, and export it wherever we want to. Here's a little example of what you can make. I've used my Lego Wally model with little fairy lights going between his hands. You'll notice they're glowing and twinkling, which looks really exciting. Now to complete this activity, all you really need is an iPad and a stylus of some kind. So an Apple Pencil, Logitech Rayon, or a different type of stylus. Or even if you want to, you can use your finger. It really doesn't matter. In which case, all you need is an iPad with the Keynote app installed. So what are we waiting for? Let's go straight into step number one. Okay, my first job is to open up the camera app and to capture a quick photograph of what I'm going to decorate with fairy lights. For me, I'm going to use my Wally model, but you might want to use your classroom or the room you're in or an object in your home, which you can then decorate and make look extra special. And you might be thinking, well, why is Jacob using his Wally model for this video? Well, it's inspired by the film Wally, where he has the Christmas lights that he untangles and gives to Eva. Now I've got my photograph, I'm going to open the Photos app and open that picture. I'm then going to press edit in the top corner and I'm going to change the filters. This will make the picture look quite different, it will change the colour, the warmth, the coolness of the picture. And for my picture of Wally, I want it to look much more robotic, so I'm going to choose a dramatic cool effect. Pick one that you like for your scene. If you're doing wintry fairy lights, you might want to make it a bit cooler and icier perhaps, or nice and warm and cosy if you want as well. Let's have a quick pause here while you get your photograph and experiment with filters, and when you're ready, step number two will start in a moment's time. Next up, we're going to open the Keynote app. And on Keynote, you want to make a new document, and we're going to choose just a regular template. I'm going to try and change the canvas size. So at the moment, my Keynote files are landscape widescreen. I want them to be a more normal size, like the iPad screen itself. Press the three dots in the corner, and then you can choose standard, which is four to three ratio. From here, I'll choose a simple white template, and when it opens, I'll delete those three text boxes, so I've got an empty page. Next, I'm going to press the plus button in the top right corner, navigate to photos, and then pick that photo I've just taken. Try and make sure it fills as much of the page as you can so your drawing is nice and big. And then when you're done scaling your picture, press the format button in the top toolbar, that's the paintbrush, and then you're going to change a couple of settings. First of all, you want to go across to style, and you want to drag the slide that says opacity down about halfway. That will make your picture a little bit see-through, which makes it easier to draw on top of. Then I'm going to go to the Arrange tab, and I'm going to lock the image in place, so I can't move it accidentally. At this point, we're ready to start doing our drawing, so tap your Apple Pencil on the screen, or if you've not got a stylus, tap on the plus button and then insert a new drawing. We'll take a quick pause now while you get your picture loaded into Keynote and get it locked in position, and when you're ready, step three will begin shortly. It's now time to begin drawing our fairy lights. Now for me, I'm going to draw the cable or the cord first of all, and I tend to think of this as being a dark green colour. So I'll go on the pencil tool, and then I'll use the colour picker to choose a dark green colour. I want the pen to be fairly thick for the cord so it stands out against my photo. Maybe not quite that thick, so I'll tap on the pen again, and I'll choose a slightly thinner one. Yes, that looks much better. I'm then going to draw the cord of the lights going around Wally's arms. So I'll imagine he's holding it in his hands, and the cable will go in front and behind. It doesn't look perfect, but you get the idea. And then I'm going to draw the actual light bulbs as well. I'm going to do all of this in green, and for the actual bulb shape itself, I'm going to make the pen really, really thin. So you just get an outline. Now I've got the outlines of some bulbs drawn, I can go onto the paint tube, and I can use the colour picker to pick a really nice bright colour for these lights. I can then tap into those shapes that I've drawn, and it will fill them automatically with that colour. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me draw all of these lights, so through the magic of editing, I'm now going to be doing this super fast, and you'll see it gradually builds up with more and more lights. I've chosen four colours that look quite colourful and quite bright, and I think it looks really good. 
Doing the drawing will take you a few minutes to get everything done, so feel free to pause the video now and come back when you're ready to move on, and then we'll start step number four together. We're now going to animate our fairy lights, and to do this we want to make it look like they're flashing on and off. So I'm going to go back into the drawing mode, and this time I'm going to colour in some of the bulbs in a much darker shade to make it look like they're turned off. So all of my green and pink bulbs, I'm going to use the paint tube, choose a darker colour, and then tap on the bulb itself, and that will recolour that bulb to be a darker, darker shade. When I'm done, I'm going to come out of drawing mode, and then on the left hand side where I've got my slide navigator, I'm going to tap onto that first light, and I'm going to press duplicate. That will make an exact copy of my first page. On page two, I'm then going to go into my editing mode, and I'm going to make the green and pink lights turn on again by making their colour much brighter, and I'll make the blue and yellow lights turn off by making their colour much darker. That now means on both slides I've got different lights on on slide one and on slide two. You can also, if you want to make this really special, use the paint tube and move the opacity down to about 40%, and then draw a glowing circle behind your lights to match the colour of the bulb. By making the opacity around 40%, it means you can then see the bulb and the glow around it. And I like this effect so much, I'm going to go back to my first slide and quickly change those as well to make the bulbs that are lit up look like they're glowing. If I then tap between 1 and 2, 1 and 2 nice and quickly, you can start to see the animation taking shape where you've got the bulbs changing. You could add three or four slides here and have different lights on for each one to make some really interesting patterns, but for now I'll stick to two. Let's have another quick pause here while you decide which lights should be on and which ones should be off on each of your slides, and when you're ready we'll start step number five. Okay, earlier we made our picture slightly see-through to make it easier to draw. I'm going to change that back now so the picture looks normal, so I'll tap on it once and then tap on it again to unlock. Then I can press the format tool and I can go back to my style and move the opacity to 100% again. I'll do that on both of my slides so my photos look like they did when I had them in the Photos app earlier. Then, when you're ready and you've tapped between the slides to make sure it looks good, you're going to press the three dots in the top corner and go to Export. From here you can choose Animated GIF and you'll get a new screen that comes up with a few options. The most important ones are the quality at the top, so I put mine to extra large, extra high quality, and also the slide range. So right now it says from one to one. That means it's only looking at my first slide. If I tap on that, I can change it to one to two, which will then play all of my slides in the GIF. If you've done more than two slides, change your slide range to include them as well. And then the last main option is the speed of your animation. You can experiment with this and see what looks good for you. I like it more or less in the middle, and then you're going to press export. At this stage, you'll see a small preview in the middle of your animated GIF of your fairy lights, and you can then save that image into your Photos app. All that's left to do now is to go into Photos and open up my animated GIF so we can enjoy it in all its high quality. Imagine having these fairy lights going around your room or your office or your classroom, wherever you are. Imagine having a bookshelf decorated in these lights. You can use your imagination and you can create anything you like with this technique in Keynote. And we've completed five really good steps today. We've learned about the camera and filters, we've learned about the drawing tools in Keynote, and we've learned a really good effect for animation. I really hope you've enjoyed following the quick lesson today, and I'm really excited to see what you've made as well. So please share your experiences in the comments down below, or if you can on Twitter as well using the hashtag quick lessons. And if you found this video really helpful or you enjoyed what you've made today, please do press the like button down below and subscribe as well. That will really help my channel grow and it will help you stay up to date with all the next quick lessons that are coming in the future. Until then, see you next time.